so I don't make the same mistakes I did last year. Hey guys, welcome back or welcome to my channel. It's Sharon here. Today the weather is not looking too hot in Seoul, so I'm just having a cozy day in. And while I'm at it, I thought that I would take this time to take some inventory of my books so I could get started on my summer read list. I usually like to have my list fully curated and ready to go before June. And so I got started on it last weekend. Since it is mid-April and it's nearly May, so I'm going to slowly start to put together the list. And to do that, I thought that taking inventory of my current collection is a must so that I can get an idea of what I want this summer to look like, to see what's missing from my collection. And I seem to have a lot of memoirs and a lot of essays but I don't have that many novels yet so I think this summer I really want to add more novels and more fictional books to my collection. I believe that each and every book has its own special season that needs to be read during that period in order to get the full experience of that book. Speaking of, my summer vibes are usually sort of sad, almost kind of dark and a little melancholic. It's sad girl summer for me. I love the idea of hot girl summer but I just can't enjoy it myself mainly because I am not good with heat. Korean summer is insane. It is scorching hot here and the humidity does not help at all with the situation so I mostly stay indoors which means I mostly stay at home and read my sad little books and listen to just a truckload of Lana songs and there's also a little Gracie Abrams and Girl in Red in the mix. I have a dedicated sad girl summer playlist on my Spotify so if anyone wants it, I'll link it in the description box. You can go have a listen. That's a little preview of what my summer vlogs are going to look like. I'm probably going to be channeling my Lana Del Rey energy a lot during that time so there you go. Since I have all my books out here with me, I'm going to show you three of my favorite summer books from last year. The first one is Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner. This came out in 2021, but I just read it last year, so I was a bit late to the party. I'm pretty sure most of you watching this now have already read this, but for those of you that didn't, this is a memoir dedicated to the author's late mother and it is set right around the time her mother is diagnosed with cancer and during that time the author recalls on a lot of her past memories with her mom and so this book focuses on their relationship throughout her entire life. It really shows the complexity a mother-daughter relationship can have. This book was inexperienced to say the least because I think I actually read this in one sitting. I remember reading this throughout the entire night and just bawling my eyes out. So props to the title. I could really relate to the author even though we led completely different lives and we basically have nothing in common whatsoever. I felt that we were or went through the same emotional experiences growing up in the US as a nation and just as a daughter in a mother-daughter relationship. The love that you share with one another is just unwavering, but sometimes that fact can feel so irrelevant to your situation because you're hurting. But a lot of the times you confuse that hurt with hate, but in the end, really, the love that you share is all that matters, and I think this book is a good reminder of that fact. It made me think back on my own relationship with my own mother. I just felt like I was getting a different perspective and it made me rethink my past and just, yeah, it did a lot for me. There was also this strange catharsis from having a good cry and this was the first time where I genuinely thought that sometimes a good book is the best therapy money can buy. I was so glad that I didn't make any plans to go out that day so no one had to see my puffy face. Yeah. 
And another book was Yellow Face by Rebecca F. Kwong. I think she also wrote Babel. Basically one of those books where the main character is the antagonist and is a struggling author. And in contrast to her situation, her friend is this really successful author and by some freak accident she passes away and suddenly she just finds herself stealing her late friend's manuscript and publishing it and it's a huge success and yeah so you could tell right from the start that she does not make the best choices i mean her choices and actions are bordering on felony so it's kind of like a thriller. It has a little mystery in the mix as well. Throughout the whole book, she's trying to convince not only others but herself that her actions are justified. As I was reading, I knew she was completely in the wrong because let's face it, she is just horrible. But as I was reading, I remember questioning my own morals because sometimes I just started feeling kind of bad for her and I almost like almost wanted her to get away with it there's hardly any redemption in the end so if you have trouble reading about characters like this I don't think this is going to be the most pleasurable book for you but I had a fine time with it it felt like I was watching a new HBO thriller series yeah and the third book is Simple Passion by Annie Erno. I feel like I've mentioned this and Annie Erno so many times before in my channel but I really think there is no limit to how many times you can bring her up. This book is just some of her journal entries from the time when she was having an affair with a married man. I've never had my world revolve around a single person so I couldn't really relate to what she was feeling and what she was writing about but her writing style is just so... it really draws you in. And so after you're done, it makes you feel like you're waking up from a fever dream in the best way. Those three were just a few of my favorite summer reads. So I'm still putting together a list for this summer. And I think some of the books I have currently on the list might get taken off. And I know a lot are going to be added on. But I'll show you a few books that are on the definitely list. I'll also be talking about how I get my book recommendations, where I source my books. So for those of you who are wondering where I get all my books from, now is the perfect time to find out. It's Transit by Rachel Klusk. This is the second book to her outline trilogy and I read this last December. And this is like the perfect example of reading a book in the wrong season. I mean, just the cover alone screams summer. And the only reason I didn't read this last summer was because I hadn't known about it. Which is one of the reasons why I decided to curate my summer list now. So I don't make the same mistakes I did last year. In this book, the main character is in Greece for the summer. And if I'm remembering correctly, she is a writer. It's just a collection of all the conversations she had with the people she's met on the plane ride over and in Greece. And it's a fictional novel, but it kind of reads as a non-fiction book, which is interesting. And so I can't wait to read the second part of the trilogy. Another one on the definitely list is Getting Lost by Annie Erno. I also mentioned this in my videos before, and it's basically an elongated version of Simple Passion. I think Annie Erno is one of those female authors that really let her feminine side shine through her writing. Whenever I'm reading one of her works, I just feel like the most beautiful, delicate female being which is one of the reasons why I love her writing so much. A book I got for second hand while I was in Hong Kong, Everything I Know About Love by Dolly Allerton. And I think this is the perfect definition of a light, casual, fun summer read. This may be the only book in my collection right now that isn't depressing. If I think I'm getting a little too depressed from all my sad books, I will switch to this for a little breather in between. The last one on the definitely list for now is a Murakami book and it is A Wild Sheep Chase. Believe it or not, this is my first Murakami novel. I know, like, I know he is a reputational author and that his books are incredible, but I just heard that the way he depicts women is not the best and I wasn't sure if I would be able to enjoy his books if it had those moments. 
but I also heard that despite that, his books are incredible. And I thought that it was kind of unfair for me to pass judgment without any first-hand experience with his books. I was deciding between Norwegian Wood and this, but just purely based on the description on the back of the book, I was more drawn to this. We'll see how it goes. If I enjoy it, I may read Norwegian Wood next or maybe Kafka on the Shore. That sounds pretty fun too. So I mainly source my books from Instagram or Goodreads. I don't know what that says about me, but it's the plain truth. And I think bookstagram accounts are one of the best things to ever come out of social media. One of my favorite accounts is Endless Book Club. I think it's really hard to pick a book to read without reading a few pages before. Which is why I love this particular account because she not only posts the books that she's reading but she also posts her favorite quotes and her favorite parts and so through her posts I usually could get a better idea of books that I've been wanting to read or was thinking about reading and I also look to Lauren's account for some book recommendations because she reads some amazing books and I also really love her vlogs so I look to her for some reading inspo and yeah if you're not really a book person yourself and you've never really had reading as a hobby I don't think that you should feel pressured to read just because everybody else is but I will say that it's a great way to pass time and to just spend some time away from your phone and your screen so yeah, I'm not pressuring anyone to read but maybe try it out this summer or this spring give it a go I feel like books really enrich in your life, so yeah, no pressure, but if you have time, try it out. Thanks for watching another one of my videos. I hope you were able to get some books from this video for your reading list. So let me know if you're planning to read any of these in the comments. And also, if you have any books of your own that you are planning to read this summer, also leave them in the comments. I'd love to get more recommendations. Also, if you've read any of the books that I've mentioned, I'd love to know what your experience was like reading it, what you thought about it. It's always fun to know other people's thoughts on books, so yeah, leave them all in the comments. I hope this video was helpful or I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next vlog. Bye!